Sunday, July 21st, 2013. If you recall, in last week's video, a week ago, I was talking about setting up a large short as the market approached the prior high here, the prior all-time high of May 22nd. If you follow me on Twitter, right here as we were getting close to it, I said... Uh, I don't think the short is going to occur right here. I think the market wants to go a little bit higher and there will be a better short somewhere later on. So I did not get short at all on the May 22nd high. And part of the reason why I didn't is that the market profile uh, did not give a short signal. And I'll get into that in a second. But before I do, I want to show you what the Dow looks like on the daily. So it breached here also at the... Uh, at the all-time high there and then we look at the Russell which is still powering higher not backing off and then the only divergence is occurring in the NDX which backed off quite a bit on Friday because of Google earnings Google gapped down a huge amount then rallied back but still was off uh, about fourteen dollars at the end of the day and the Nasdaq composite is also pulled back a little bit on that gap there um, I am Mm, I am not putting that much weight into the weakness in the NASDAQ. I think that it is apparent that tech is starting to act like a drag here at these highs. But my focus, as always, continues to be on the main benchmark, which is the S&P. So that being said, what's the game plan going forward? Okay, if you recall in last week's video, I gave you lots of examples of why the structure was poor. I kept saying, look, you have all this move up on dojis here. All the market does is just gap and go sideways, gap and go sideways. And it hasn't changed much. In the last week, there's still been small body candles. It's been better than these dojis. But overall, the structure still basically remains poor. So I think, I think that the market is still setting itself up for some sort of corrective action, at least like we got here on this Fed move here on the 22nd. But we shall see. All right, going into the profile. What I saw is the fact that here, when the market made the new high that was on 718, this was the day actually that we broke out through the May 22nd highs. First thing you should notice is there is a classic lack of excess on the top. Remember, this is excess when you have like a spiky move here. This is a lack of excess. This is a poor high here again. This is absolutely a poor high. And after that, uh, poor high was formed, I did not initiate shorts on that day, and I set up basically a line in the sand where I thought the market would get weaker if it was crossed. And that line in the sand essentially is these distributions here on July 15th, July 16th, and July 17th. And I think it's really key once I show you here what the market has been doing since then. You'll notice that this was a a value area with a poor high. This is the upper distribution of this day. This day here on the 16th actually has two distributions. Value was actually lower, but uh, there was also a distribution here. The next day, instead of filling in here and matching this value lower, which would indicate the market was ready to move lower, the market actually gaps up because here's your close on the 16th, here's your open on the 17th at the green dot, and then does what? Establishes value back where it was before and also in the upper part of the double distribution. That's kind of a, a good tell. Whenever you have a double distribution, you want to watch the next day when you're trading futures to see where is value and where is acceptance. Is the acceptance going to be in the upper distribution or in the lower distribution? Obviously, upper is more bullish, lower is more bearish. The bulls had every chance to bring the market lower on the 16th, and they did not because they could not maintain lower value. Value once again rose up on the next day. Let's move forward. Again, July 18th, on the day when the market uh, made the new high over the May 22nd high, we opened up where? Right at the upper end of the distribution of the three days, didn't sell off very deep into it, and rallied back up once again. The next night, this is the uh, 718 evening session, so it's the Thursday night to Friday morning session. Look what happens in the overnight session. You close here, so we, we hit the high, we backed off gently. A lot of people are probably initiating shorts here, thinking, okay, that was it. 
But the key is, is that this generally doesn't end with a whimper like this. It ends with a bang that looks more like this. There's a little bit of excess high here on the, um, on the Friday distribution. And I'll get to that in a second. So we didn't get any of the excess on the high. The next night, futures trade. They open about flat. And look what happens overnight. Where does the market sell off to overnight? Right to the low end of the distribution. And, and again, can't power any higher. And then on Friday, options expiry, we open basically flat. Right? We open exactly at Thursday's um, close. We go a little bit lower, right about to the mid-range of the overnight session. This uh, dark yellow line is half back. It's the midpoint of the overnight session. And we rally again. Now, we did have a little bit of uh, excess on the high in the last period because you can see the market kind of ran up at the end, but we did also close at the high. So going forward, this is going to be interesting to see if, we're, if we find acceptance again anywhere in here. That means the rally continues. This high has been repaired by a little bit. This sort of excess can, can be cut off and sort of glued on to this distribution. So we did repair the poor high, but in order for the excess to remain and the high to be secure, the market obviously has to sell off below it. The market has to basically create value somewhere in here below the spike. If the market next week trades within this spike area and finds acceptance up here, it will tell us that the market once again has not auctioned high enough to bring in a good amount of sellers. It's basically not ready to sell off. Okay. Now, on the downside, as I was saying, if this high is to be excess, next week and this was the top of the move it doesn't feel like it to me but let's just say it is we do have some excess here on the profile as we ran up on some momentum buying into the close if this is the high and we go lower the market will not bring in strong sellers unless it takes out where obviously the low end of the distribution here of the three day of the three day distribution we know that we've constantly found support here and the market has found it very difficult in the last few sessions to get below this 1675 area. And if we look at this, oops, I'll go close that. If we look at this like this, I can bring these days together and I can merge them. And that will show us what this profile from 715 onwards looks like. And notice, interestingly enough, where's the point of control of those three days when, the, when all that action is merged? It's right here. It's 77.75. Look at the overnight low on Friday. Uh, not the overnight low, excuse me. The low on Friday, 78.50. Just basically one point above the fairest price to do business of those three days. And again, as I was saying, overnight action Thursday to Friday wasn't even able to get below the value that was created over those three days. So even if the market softens a bit early in the week, I want you to pay close attention to this level. This is really the key, is the 75. The market has to come below this 75 and accept below it, meaning it can't just be like a move down and then move back up. That would be rejection. It needs to come down. It needs to spend some time there, hang out, and build some value and have some volume in that area. So that's your key level to the downside. If we don't see and if we don't see any selling below the 1675 next week, assume that the rally is basically continuing onward. All right. Now that being said, continuing onward to where? Well, I think trend channel. As I always say, I'm I'm always very enamored of looking at uh, trend channels. If I go back to the SPX, I will switch it to the daily. That is true. This trend line is obviously broken. It doesn't matter. Here is our new channel to the upside, which we've started from the swing low of June 24th. And let's just copy that and basically just drag it over. Notice how, oops, I can't get that just perfect. There we go. Notice how highs here, respected it, came back into the channel. We've had like one day of pullback in how many trading sessions? I don't know. But where's the new resistance now? Basically at the top of this channel here around 1715 area. 17, I'm going to call it 1710 to 1715. Right around in this area. So that's what I'm going to be looking for. And I would like to see it on a very spiky move in the profile. And I don't know if Friday's action was it. 
was Friday's action of the excess of the spike into the close, which was really not a big spike. There was, was, this was not really a major thing. There was a lot of futures volume traded towards the end of the session. Um, but then again, also, it's options expiry. It's options expiry Friday. So I don't put a lot of weight on these moves. I usually tend to discount any type of moves that are happening, especially around the open and the close, on the third Friday of every month. There's also always all sorts of shenanigans going on, and uh, traders are scrambling to cover positions and, and push stocks around to their strike prices, and there's lots of hedging going on. So that's the thing. So if, it, if indeed the top is to come at some point up in that 17 to 1712 area, I'm going to want to see a spiky move preferably on good momentum, even better if it's like early in the day, maybe coming up to like 1130, you can see the spike move up to the top and then the market sells off from there. So we shall see. All right. If you have interest in all of the things that you see in this video talking about, for instance, uh, market profile, um, let's split that back into days. Um, talking about market profile, remember I do write a blog every morning which you can check out here. It's at shadowtrader.net blog. Every morning between 9 a.m. and 9.15 roughly, uh, I do a post here and I show you snapshots of the profile and I give you basically important key areas you need to look for if you're going to be day trading futures that day or even if you're not. If you're just looking for key areas of where the market is going to have support or resistance, I, I go through all of that uh, every morning. So please check that out. All right. Uh, last but not least, a couple of uh, things. The stock challenge is only going to be in effect for two more weeks. Uh, this Friday we started a new one. And if you, re if you haven't checked this out yet, this is on our show every, uh, every Friday. We look for people to email in via the submission form their stock picks, and then we let all those picks run from Monday to Friday the next week. And whomever has the best pick, either long or short, on a percentage basis wins the Shadow, Teacher, Shadow Trader excuse me, T-shirt and coffee mug. All right, This weekly ongoing contest has been going on for a couple of years now, I think, and it's going to be ending on August 9th. So the last stock challenge is going to be on is going to start on Friday, August 2nd. We always look for the entrance to use the submission form and send their stocks in early on Friday morning. All right? So August 2nd is going to be the last stock challenge, so check that out. All right? Beyond that, Tasty Trade Show is happening every day at 2 p.m. Eastern with myself and Brad. We are currently just finishing up week number 2 of our Tasty Trade Iron Condor earnings experiment, and these are all of the trades in glaring uh, detail. Uh, every single in and out and uh, gross profit fees, etc., with commissions, all of that. Uh, so far, we have done 17 trades, I believe, and we've had uh, three losers and 14 winners uh, so far. And it's been going okay. So, all we're doing is we're selling iron condors in stocks where it is feasible to do so ahead of their earnings announcement. We are doing some adjustments if necessary the next day. You can follow along with this if you watch us on Tasty Trade every day at 2 o'clock. And you can also get the um, spreadsheet yourself by just typing in shadowtrader.net slash tasty trade slash iron condors dot XLS. All right, type that into your browser. And if you hit return, you'll see you can download the Excel right there and follow along. All right. Um, trade ideas for next week. What do, I, what do I got? Not a whole lot. Um, had a couple of things this week that worked out pretty well. One thing that did catch my eye is Priceline. I think it wants to rally ahead of its earnings. They haven't reported yet. I apologize. I don't have the date right here in front of me, but they have not reported yet. And look how the stock is acting. I mean, just absolutely classic pullback pattern. Normally, if the earnings weren't coming up, I would be thinking it's too good to be true. I generally don't like these kind of perfect, clean textbook patterns where it's like, oh, goes up, moves down, just buy the breakout here. It's so easy. It usually doesn't work that way. Um, that's the way it works in like trading books and whatnot. Usually, I, I don't look for these types of patterns. I look for a more ugly type of pattern where there's like a like here, like where there's like a you know reversal of fortune, like kind of out of nowhere that that surprises the other side, that the the dominant uh, side that's in control. But anyway, um, ahead of earnings, stocks are usually bulled up, uh, and I think this may be you know would not be an exception. I would say I'm thinking Priceline probably has some uh, some strength in it uh, going to the upside. So I think that's one to watch um, as this pullback unfolds here. Obviously, once it breaks the downtrend line, I think there's possibility of more upside. All right. 
Thank you very much for hanging out with me once again on the Shadow Trader Video Weekly. On behalf of myself and the entire Shadow Trader team here in beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, as always, I wish you good trading and good night. Thank you.